The worst day of my life in the Air Force was the 15th of January 1945. We were flying from Green Island uh, to Rabaul to bomb the Taboy Wharf at the say northeast corner of the Rabaul Harbour. Uh, it was only capable of taking a mini sub or something like that, but the, the only jetty sticking out into the wharf. So 28 aircraft set off uh, to that site, all with 1,000 pound bombs or two 500, 500 pounders. And bombing from a fairly good height, uh, mostly five, six, seven thousand feet, and going down as vertically as you could uh, to drop these on this wharf. Well, uh, I was right at the tail end, Charlie, of that log, but Frank Keefe from Auckland was immediately in front of me, and Pat Tennant from uh, Napier area, or we were out of Hastings, uh, he was leading our little section, red section. Uh, as we pulled up after dropping our bombs, I noticed flames coming out from the left wing route of uh, Frank's plane. I called up Red Leader from Red 4 to uh, say that Red 3 was on fire, looks as though he might bail. And uh, he did. He, he swung over to the right to uh, bail out, and I went left and then climbed higher to get out of the anti-aircraft fire, which was pretty hot at that time. And uh, I say I'm just too young to die, Lord, at that time. Uh, it became the subject of a book by Brian Cox, too young to die. And uh, at uh, 20, just turned 20, I became a man in a big hurry. But Frank uh, bailed out, and uh, the story of courage and loyalty and tragedy was that he landed in the middle of Rawal Harbour, and being a strong swimmer, set out for the entrance. The tide chains swept him back in. It, uh, he swam out again, was swept back towards the south side of the harbour where he pinched the dinghy and uh, uh, only had one oar in it so he sculled his way out so far and found he didn't, couldn't make any progress against the tide, started swimming again and swept right back into the middle of the harbour and picked up later by a, a Japanese. But he died of his wounds on the ball and uh, we are told that he uh, were buried in a series of graves they had over there for uh, their enemies, as they call them. And later he was uh, transferred to New Caledonia, where his, he's in the memorial cemetery there at uh, Tontuta, I think it is. So. Uh, the big loss, though, was the rescue attempts later in the day. We had two squadrons with quite a few planes each. And on the way back, just on darkness, there was a huge front, black electrical storm uh, between Green Island and New Island. And we had to, well, I didn't have to go Fortunately, but the the flights had to go through that, and seven pilots didn't make it back to uh, base again. Those that did had uh, managed to see the two searchlights shining vertically from Green Island, and managed to throw their aircraft onto the ground and, as you say, make emergency landings. But some hit coconut trees, some collided in mid-air, others thinking uh, they were at, at a thousand feet were actually on the ground, on, on touching the water, and they would just crash. 
uh, they found that the loss of pressure in that front was so great that the altimeters gave very false reading. So uh, the rescue attempts continued next day, looking for anybody in a dinghy. I did flights on that, uh, cruising around all those waters between Green Island and New Island, where we knew we knew how far they had got before they hit the front. So uh, that became a very black day, and I was introduced to cigarettes for the first time in my life. 